What's up, nerds? Nobody asked for this deck tech, but we're here to do it anyways. So this is the deck that I've been playing. I change it almost every week, depending on what cards I get mad at. Um, <laughs> so the, the land base has basically stayed the same. Um, so I've got 13 swamps in it right now. I don't have enough betas to run beta swamps, so I'm running these peasant white border limited swamps. But they're all right. Um, four castle locked lanes, four field of ruins. There's two hives. One Takanuma, and then one Urborg. Uh, so I will say about the mana base, there's really a few other options you can go with. You can go with Sunken Citadels, which tap for two to activate uh, land abilities. And most people are running those if they're running the Waste Not builds. Because uh, okay. they've got to reach Sanitariums. So those tap for two, so it's cheaper. Um, they do reduce the cost on Field of Ruin and Hive, but it's not that crucial for me, and I'd rather not have the land that comes in tapped. Um, I guess and Locked Win. And Locked Win, yeah. Um, so I will say, if, if you're trying to make a budget build of Mono Black, uh, you can cut the reward. It's not really that, sure. that important. Everything else produces black except yeah. for the fields. Yep. Another option, too, is the the desert that sacrifices. I can't think of the name right now. If you're yeah, Deadlands. If you're Deadlands, yep. So you could run a couple of those. They do actually give you some a little bit more reach with the removal. But other than that, the lands are pretty simple. You want the castles to draw with. Um, and when you have children in play, you really don't care about the life loss anyways. And if you're a mono black player or a demir control player, like you know that your life total is just a resource. So you, you, you leverage it. Um, so like you'll see me in videos just draw a card out six cards in hand because I have nothing to do. Uh, four Field of Ruins to deal with. Uh, there's a lot of problematic lands. Really, creature lands can be tough to deal with. Um, or, like, if you have a Vantress that you don't want to use, but I don't want you giving yeah, yeah. scries every turn, like, it's it's good to deal with. Well, even, like, Arden Veil, where it sure it's not, maybe that's not a creature thing, but it just produces yeah. It something. produces a blocker every yeah. turn. Yeah. Um, Mirex produces an attacker every turn. So, like, Field of Ruins are great. And, like... The only time that it really comes up is with the heavy black spells um, to not having. But if you time it right, you can fetch swamps with it. So um, why not a second herb board to potentially help? You could. I mean, it's legendary. Um, I was actually thinking that a second Takanuma would be good. Sure. Um, and you just cut a swamp. Basically, we'll call it 24 and a half lands at that point. Maybe that's the right mix for me. I, send, I tend to not draw them correctly. Sure. And anyone that's been watching the videos for a while can probably attest to that. Um, so we've got, like, the mono black starter pack. <laughs> so there's four fatal pushes, which are basically auto-includes. Four thought seizes that are also basically auto-includes. Um, and I'll call Shieldred also an auto-include at four. A lot of people run less, but even at four, I just I always want more shield runs. Sure. It's going to die. Yep. Um, so I, I really like Tiny Bones as a card and as a character in the lore. Um, so, like, I wanted him to be good, and I don't think he is. <laughs> so there's these great times where you're like, turn one, Tiny Bones. And they're like, turn one, Lana War Elf. And you're like, turn two, Fatal Push It, attack, cast your Lana War Elf. And that's about as good as it gets. Yeah. Um, it's a really cool card, but I just don't <laughs> think there's enough uh, for it to do. And I'll, I'll say that there was a couple times where I was playing like mono red, and I just like kept playing a card out of the graveyard with it to block with. Sure. So there's some potential, but I just don't think it's good. Um, and then because I'm running the tiny bones, I'm also not running like path to peril. So like not running board wipes. Yeah. So I think it's kind of more of a liability at this point. So I'm probably going to cut those at some point. I just I don't want to cut. Tiny not yet. He's just my best friend. Uh, there's one Cling to Dust. Uh, gives you a source of life gain or drawing cards. And you also, always have that card against me. I know. I put in one more game two. It doesn't three. matter. You always I have always that card. Do. But I never have it when there's a deluge in the graveyard. You, you did. You I literally, literally never have you it. You took it and then clinged it in the same turn. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, so anyways, I it's good against in, Garrison. Uh, it's good against <laughs> Phoenix decks. <laughs> Um, and I suppose yeah. there's other random niche decks, like if someone's playing Skate or something, you can hit it with it. Um, I made this change from a YouTube viewer that said, I play the bat and I like it better than Aetherborn. And it's been okay at best. I am more afraid of Aetherborn yeah. than I am of the bat. Like, hands down. Yeah. Um, 
I've never really liked the cards that give them cards back. Because, like, against, so against Craig, it was a great example. He drew three Reflector Mages against me. So he, he, Reflector Mage is the bat to get back a Collected Company. Then I can't cast the bat. Right. So then he cast the Collected Company. And then when I cast it again, I get, like, something that isn't as relevant. Um, so I think it really depends on your meta. I don't know what decks this is best against, because I've only played it for two weeks. Um, but I think Aetherborn is just better hands down against aggro metas, and that's what we have at this point. Yeah. Um, one Shielder's Edict, it's... I mean, there's also one Go for the Throat. They're just kind of catch-all, almost catch-all of all the spells. Um, Non-targeting is really, you know, relevant against... Why not Doomblade? Because that doesn't hit everything. It doesn't hit Shielder, you, you can't just, play it. You just go for the throat. Nobody go else for is the throat. Sh- nobody else is playing Shielder. Hits Shielder, relevant. Doomblade doesn't, bad card can't play. Um, I actually really like Long Goodbye, and maybe that's something that I put more copies in. Um, the difference between Fatal Push hitting a 2-drop and this hitting a 3-drop is really, really good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and there's not too many ways to actually trigger the Revolt. Um, and a lot of people miss it. That will hit gra- Graveyard Trespassers, and you don't need to pay the ward cost. Um, and I think it even says that. Oh, it doesn't. It does. Is this includes by the ward ability? Um, so I think that's super relevant right now, and it hits your Narset. Uh, I'm trying to think of other three mana planeswalkers. Not in same play. I don't think so. No. So creature, creature wise, we've got four graveyard trespassers. I held off playing this card for so long because this is hands down the worst mechanic for you that has ever been printed for you. And they only play tested it on Arena. For you. That's my hot take. For Matt. They're like, Arena remembers. Why can't people remember? He has to, like, transfer the thing back oh and forth. God, and I'm like, time. it's not that big. Just put it in the middle of the... No, like, I can't do it. If it's, it's not... Fine. It's like it's like you put the marker on top of your deck to remember a trigger. Like, that's the only way I can remember it. Um, but the card is great. I mean, running four of them, exiling, you know, Phoenix. Cards mm-hmm. against Phoenix. Maybe not the Phoenix itself. But reducing their graveyard size for... Treasure Cruise, or like you for Memory Deluge, is super relevant. And it's a threat. You mean for Dig Through Time? And, or and a, a, hitting exiling a the Deluge. It, dig Through Time for Delve, Deluge yeah. for, for itself. Um, so it's, it's a really good creature. It's probably the best three drop you could play. Um, Preacher of the Schism, I was running, and it just didn't feel fast enough, like enough of a clock. So if you're playing a slower game, um, maybe Preacher goes further because you'll be drawing cards off of it. it just didn't feel as good. Um, and then I put in one Murderous Rider. Murder Knight. Murder Knight. Um, because you're playing Planeswalkers, and Brett's got that stupid Planeswalker too. <laughs> so like, I just wanted another way to deal with Planeswalkers. Uh, this Insatiable Avarice is kind of my pet card uh, because I like when I have Shieldred, and I either draw three and gain six, or make you lose nine. Both of them are, they, they both feel good. Um, although it's very hard on the mana base. Sure. Uh, the difference between triple black or double black for sign and blood, when you have four field of ruins, is, it's a serious liability. There's been times where I couldn't cast it, and you just feel terrible doing the, the first mode and finding a swamp. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, them forcing you to shuffle, and you're like, well, that was a waste. <laughs> that, that, so, screwed. you could definitely run Sign of Blood in this slot, and it, it would be perfectly fine. And I've killed as many people with Sign sure. of Blood as Avarice. So. Um, and then, of course, the star of the show, the only reason you're playing Mono Black is Shielder. Actually, honestly, Invoke is the main reason. But Shielder is obviously the, the big boogeyman of the format at four four mana. This is my hot take. Shieldred is the best four drop in any tribal deck. Could be goblins, could be humans. There's no tribal anymore. It's I know. Typal. It's not typal anymore. I don't remember what they renamed it again to. Kindred. Kindred, yeah. The typal is still what they call no. it, but mm-hmm. something stupid. So whatever. it doesn't matter if you're playing humans, <laughs> goblins, merfolk, yeah. phyrexia. Oh, she is a phyrexia. But anyways, that's four drop. Um, and everyone just like hates you for playing it, which... As a black player or a control player, like that's what you want is your mm-hmm. opponent to hate. So it's true. Yeah. Best best magic is them not playing magic. Exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. So then the last card in the main deck is Invoke Despair, and I made a comment earlier that I just want a copy of it. 
so I probably end up making a swap somewhere. Like, take out a one drop, put in a five drop. What could go wrong, you know? Um, For you, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'll either, draw, I'll either draw 12 lands or two lands. There's right. nothing in between. Um, so the sideboard is just kind of random stuff at this point. Uh, I've got another copy of Cling to Dust for Phoenix or for... I, honestly, I like it against control decks, just to whittle away and yeah. draw extra cards. Um, I put in Feed the Swarms as more enchantment removal because I have to deal with Kyle's Deep Root Pilgrimage. Oh. Um, and I, it would be good against like Chase's deck with uh, the enchantments, like being able to kill um, Wedding Announcement is huge. And then I put in Forsaken Miners because I was like, if Garrison takes out Temporary Lockdown, these can do a lot of damage really fast and come back. And I've never put them in, so they probably don't belong in the sideboard. I was thinking it would be a good, like, switch over to an aggro deck sure. on play. I feel like you're you're too far into the control right. to be able to yeah. put these in. Yep. Um, oh, and then so two Blood sorry. Chiefs Thirst has cheaper removal for aggro or Planeswalker oh, removal that. for control. So uh, one damage. Duress for control matchups. Huh. You always have that against me too. Oh. Two blot outs for coma. For coma, it's been in there since coma days. Um, but also, it's just good against uh, Vein Ripper um, or like Dream Trawler if if I put it in against you. Um, Go blank is kind of like the beautiful package there, and it's also good against Phoenix decks. Any deck that uses the graveyard. Uh, there's one copy of the end. I might put one in the main deck also. Again, a way to get rid of tanks. Sure. Um, and so the reason I took one out of the main deck, and actually a lot of the reason I took out exile effects in general, is because Tiny Bonds doesn't want you to exile things. So it, it kind of doesn't synergize. So again, another reason he shouldn't be in the deck right now. Um, I only had room for one of the Liana because I didn't know what else to cut. But I would probably like to run more of her. Um, and like obviously the mono black waste not lists are gonna want right. the play more, set because yeah. your your objective is to discard more cards and I don't really have graveyard stuff to do um, and then thought distortion I played it against you finally and it didn't really do anything didn't do anything didn't really do anything but I got to, I got to cast it mm -hmm. um, it it's one of those cards that looks really good on paper and doesn't really do anything in practice so. I have yet to take it out of the sideboard, and it honestly probably doesn't belong in it. I, so, like, Thought Distortion, to me, is good against, like, uh, say, like, Phoenix deck when they, like, reload. doesn't hit Phoenix, though. It sort of does hit the Phoenix, but it hits all the spells that yeah. trigger the Phoenix. Like, that's, that's, that's the only thing, like, that yeah. style, you know what I mean, where they're yeah. reloading their hand consistently. Like you. Sure. Except for when you <laughs> played it against me. Right. So it hasn't been great. I probably I'll probably cut it at some point. Um, and then last is the damping sphere again. Same as if you watch the deck tech with Garrison's deck. It's against mono green or lotus field. And I always I always like look through my sideboard and stop at that like does this do anything in this matchup? And I always forget what it does until I read it again. Damping sphere. Yeah. 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 Everybody's like. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not playing lands that produce extra mana. Correct, but Which you're casting, playing six spells yeah. a turn. So, so. It, it's decent against Phoenix in that respect mm -hmm. too, because um, then they just don't have the mana to do everything. Uh, Dampy Sphere. I played Dampy Sphere against Brett. Oh, when he was playing. Yeah, the, Omniscience. Yeah, the, the raccoon type. Yeah, yeah. and so like you people just yeah. forget. Like yeah, I, 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 I didn't do it because it's like his lands are produced additional mana. I did it strictly because I needed to tax him enough mm -hmm. to slow him down. To slow him down. Yep. Yeah. So anyways, there's lots of changes. There's also lots of cards you could just run instead of cards that are in the list. Because um, there's just so many good black cards. Um, so I'm probably going to cut these. Sorry whoever told me that they were good. You're wrong. <laughs> I just disagree. It's fine. Um, and they could be good in your metagame. But I'll probably put the Aetherborns back in. Or I was actually thinking about cutting the six of these. Oh man, the lights. Be right back. Intermission. Intermission. Hey, uh, Anyways, I was thinking about cutting the six creatures and running more board wipes. Um, Path of Peril would be a good one to run. And I cut the extinction events 
because I had like two drops, one drops, three drops, four drops. Um, but Extinction Event would probably be decent. You just have to play around if you're going to be playing either of those yeah. soon. Um, or, you know, just put in the Aetherborns and put in more yeah. removal or maybe like um, Meat Hook Massacre so you can like cast it for two instead of three or whatever. Um, and sideboard is just all over the place because I have no idea what to run anymore. But yeah, I mean, you could run Sign of Bloods here. I've seen people run Archfiend because it's way cheaper than Shieldred, and that works just fine, too, because it's such a clock. Um, so yeah. Like I said, nobody asked for this deck tech. It's not a very interesting deck, but it's a lot of fun to play. It is not a very interesting deck. No. It's stupid. So thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.